yes, it is unfortunate that a lot of other generals and, you know, uh, uh, senior officers, aides and all of that died. But unfortunately, uh, they were not even recognized. But anyway, guys, we'll see why all of that happened because, uh, you know, journalism is an interesting profession. It thrives on aud oddity, popularity and proximity. It is no news when a dog, a dog bites a man, except the man is some superstar or celebrity. When there is an accident, the victims are not identified by names in the headline, except they are popular. And when one of them is the only popular one, the tyranny of popularity comes into play as only the famous is identified in the headline and the rest of them become known as others. The golden, this golden journalism rule angered an ally of one of the men who died in the Cardinal air crash and he chose to rant in social media. He was very sad. Every report on the, on the accident identified the late chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru, in the headline. Chief of army staff and nine or ten others lost their lives in the ill-fated crash. Those others were someone's husband, father, fiancé, brother, uncle, son, and the likes. As you can see, this is so heartbreaking. May God grant them all the fortitude to bear the loss, he complained. As though to buttress him, the fiancé of one of the new crew members, Flight Lieutenant Taiwo Olufemi Asaniye, took to social media to celebrate the man who would have been her husband, the man who proposed to her August last year, and the man she affectionately called Adigumi Hot Chokomi. Aside Asani, the others who were hidden under Tahiru's shadows were Brigadier General Abdurrahman Kulia, Chief of Military Intelligence, Brigadier General M.I. Abdul Kadri, Chief of Staff to the Chief of Staff to the Chief of Army Staff, Brigadier General Olatunji Olainka, Army Provost Marshal, Major General L. A. Hayat, ADC to Chief of Army Staff, and Major General Hamza. The orderly Sergeant Omar, FLT, LTAA Olufade, Sergeant Additional, and ACM Oyediko. They were going with Atahiru to Kaduna, where he was to serve as the special guest of honor and reviving reviewing officer at the passing out parade of the regular recruits intake from Depot, Nigeria Army, Zaria. When Kobe Bryant, the ex American basketballer, died, with his daughter in a helicopter crash. The tyranny of popularity reared its head like it always does when a star dies with lesser known people. When Mrs. Bryant held a memorial for her late husband and daughter Gigi, the way the event went made me ask, did the Bryants die alone? Of course, the answer is no. Basketball coach Alto Belli also died with his wife, Carrie, and daughter. Of course, the pilot Ara Zobayan who was taking them to the girls' basketball game in Thousand Oaks, California, is also gone. Three others, Christiana Moza, Sarah Chester, and her daughter, Peyton, perished in the crash, perished in the crash. But in the sight of the world, it is as though only Bryant matters. His daughter got mentioned because of him, thanks to having a famous father. Back in Nigeria, when ex-chief of defense staff, Air Marshal, Alex Bade was killed. It was initially thought that his driver was also killed, but it was as though he was not important. He would have died without a name. Men without brains, but Brown pumped hot head into air, into air chief Marshal Bade. They also shot his driver. Bade's death revealed the unfairness of humanity. When a poor man dies in the company of a pig, of a big man, he becomes nothing but a footnote. It is like his death means nothing. Almost everybody will talk about the big man, while the poor or unpopular man or woman's family will mourn in silence. It is also not good to die in a tragedy where one of the key culprits is a big man who, who those in authority cannot move against. When you die in these circumstances, you become a mere footnote. The tyranny of the popular also played out when a church collapsed in Rio, the Aqua Ibom State Capital, some years back, it all played out at Rainer's Bible Church International. The founder of the church was to be ordained a bishop. He is not a small fry, so the church was jammed packed. 
Akwa Embon State Governor Udom Emanuel came with some of his commissioners and aides, but 30 minutes into the governor's arrival, hell literally came down. No thanks to human error. The church iron pillar gave way and the blue roof came dump, thumping down, of course, on people. And accounts even said someone was caught into two by the iron pillars. The policeman who reportedly saved the governor is now six feet below and some others broke their necks, their limbs and their back. The founder of the church, Pastor Akan Weeks, had his broken leg. The day after the incident, we saw figures as high as 160 in the media. It was attributed to Chief Medical Director of the University of Uyo Teaching Hospital, who later denied it. Police gave the figure as 29. Governor Emmanuel said only 23 died. For students of the University of Uyo and the Uyo City Polytechnic, Believed to have been worst hit by the disaster, reality looks like a dream. Emmanuel's men, who crawled out of the death hole, had interesting testimonies to ch to share. His chief press secretary, Ekerete e Udo, said an iron rod nearly caught his neck, but eventually hit him on the back. The cap of his left knee was broken and pains traveled all over his body. Charles Udo, who joined the state executive, Council only some weeks before the disaster thought he was the, watching a movie when the pillar started coming down. He was on his way out of the church to catch a flight when tragedy struck. He would have been out, but protocol demanded that he told the governor before vanishing from the church hall. It was this protocol induced task that he was accomplishing when death almost took him away. He had to run here and there to prevent the Iron Pillars from turning him into a candidate of the mortuary. Nollywood actor Ikeri Nkanga, who has acted almost all roles imaginable, was humbled when he had to wade through bodies to safety. Of all those who died in the tragedy, we were lucky to identify Josephine. Well, for me, I would say this is something that happens all the time. And um, if you're fortunate enough, well... Everybody prays for a better, you know, ending of life. But of course, most of the time, those who are well-known, famous people are always recognized anywhere in the world. So really, uh, the chief of army staff is not the first. There are so many, like it's mentioned in uh, this very report. So life happens, and uh, this is what happens uh, on a daily basis. If someone who is not well recognized in the society dies nobody actually remembers them but you know someone who is famous people always want to talk about them so it's just life and i think it should be accepted in that manner but of course we should always celebrate one another whether alive or dead so that is it friends thank you so much for listening please drop your comments give this video a thumbs up do have a pleasant time bye for now